Good day to everyone. I thought of discussing about the RMS value, and the sinusoidal waveform of the voltage today. If you rotate a magnet in between coil wind poles like this, an electromotive force that is EMF will be induced between the two ends of the coil. This EMF, also called as potential difference or voltage here, varies in a sinusoidal waveform due to the continuous changing of north and south poles of magnet ends. Pattern of magnetic field on permanent magnet shown here, and the magnetic flux path is from north to south always. When magnetic field rotates, EMF is generated and its maximum value reaches, when magnetic flux is at 90 degrees angle with the coil wind pole pair. The voltage value at any point on the curve can be taken by multiplying the sine value of the relevant angle of that point with the maximum value of voltage on the curve. Equation for this is given by V equals V maximum into sine theta. For easy reference, we will turn the coil set and the magnet to the horizontal position first, and the north side of the magnet is at the right side of it to begin with. When you start rotating the magnet on counterclockwise direction, voltage induced in the coil starts its sinusoidal pathway from zero. This is because the sine value of zero degrees is zero, and the resulting voltage value at zero degrees is also zero, when applied to the equation. Further, magnetic flux on magnet acts along the horizontal line at this point, and the horizontal coil set do not cut it hence no EMF is produced. When you turn the magnet to 30 degrees, voltage value is half of V maximum, since sine value of 30 degrees is 0 0.5. When you turn the magnet by another 30 degrees to make it 60 degrees, voltage value is 0 0.866 times its maximum voltage value since sine 60 is 0 0.866. After turning the magnet by 90 degrees, voltage at this point produces its maximum voltage, since value of sine 90 is 1. Further, at this point the magnetic field is perpendicular to the coil wound pole set, and the cutting of the magnetic flux is at its maximum here. Result is, the maximum voltage of this curve induced at this point. After the magnet completes a full turn, induced voltage will make a full sine wave, starting from zero and finishing also at zero. Instead of taking this continuously and rapidly changing voltage value, we take RMS value of voltage for our calculation work on electricity, and we'll see how it arrives at us. Let's get this sine curve widened to make it more visible here. All the values for voltage curve from 0 to 360 degrees marked here on the graph, with 30 degree intervals. You will see that the V maximum value involves here, for all the values on the voltage curve. And to omit this we need to get the condition, where the V maximum value equals 1. Then the equation for finding V becomes, V equals sine theta. We get voltage values excluding V maximum now. When consider the area covered by the voltage curve here, you will see two halves are equal in size. But cancels out since one is positive and the other one is on negative side. Here we will consider a new curve. With the equation of V1 equals, V maximum into sine squared theta. With the condition of V maximum equals 1, this equation becomes V1 equals sine squared theta here. Sine squared value can be taken by squaring the sine value at that particular angle. So we received values for V1 here, related to the angles marked on the graph. You will see that V1 value is the square of the V value at that angle. And all the negative values also has become positive values now, due to squaring of those. Let's forget the area under the voltage sine wave now, and consider the area covered by new V1 curve which is on the positive side only. Marked lines on the new curve, divides its area to 12 parts, each part having same width of 30 degree angle. When consider the highlighted part, square area is equal to the height at the middle of it, multiplied by the width of it. We consider 12 equal parts under the curve here. But we need to divide the curve into more equally spaced parts to get the area under it with accuracy. Middle height of this part is the squared value of sine 45. Value of sine 45 is 0 0.707 and the squared value is 0 0.5. Since all 12 parts are equal in width, we can take width of each part as one unit. Then the square area of this part is 0 0.5 square units. Likewise we can calculate unit square areas of all 12 parts, and mention here under each column. When these 12 square areas are added together, 
we get the total area under the curve V1. For total area under the curve we get 5.996 and can be rounded off as 6.0. Then to get the mean of this total square area, you need to divide 6.0 by total of equal parts, that is by 12. For mean square or mean of squares, you get the value of 0 0.5. To get the root mean square value, you need to get the square root of this mean square value. Square root of 0 0.5 is 0 0.707, and is the root mean square value we are looking for. Since we used the condition, where v maximum is equal to 1 when deriving root mean square value, we need to mark our MS voltage as 0 0.707 into v maximum on the graph, since there will be a value for it always. In US, our MS voltage is 120 volts, and in Europe and most of other countries, it is 230 volts. When divided by 0 0.707, you get the maximum voltage values on a sine curve as 170 volts in US and 325 volts in Europe. Hope you got fair idea on our MS voltage and the sinusoidal voltage curve now. If this video is helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.